Now we are going to perform examination of the uh, remaining six cranial nerves. First, we'll uh, discuss this uh, cranial nerve number seven, and then we'll proceed ahead. So, cranial nerve number seven examination include ten things. Four things will be observed on the face of the patient. Then, lately, there will be four tests which we'll be performing, and then there will be two additional tests. So, what are the four things which we'll be examining on the face of the patient? The first thing is we'll be examining the frowning on the forehead. So, if there is proper frowning on the forehead of the patient on one side and say this is absent on the other side that may indicate that the absent frowning part is having some lesion underlying which happens in the setting of Bell's palsy which is a lower motor uh, then the next thing will be examining the eyes so if one of the eye is affected if there is some facial nerve and Bell's palsy what will be happening patient will not be able to close that particular eye. So, closure of eye will not be there. The third thing, we will be examining the nasolabial fold. The nasolabial fold on the affected side will be absent. So, that is the third thing which we will be examining. So, this nasolabial fold will be absent on the affected side. And the fourth thing, we will be seeing the angle of mouth. The angle of mouth will be deviated towards the healthy side. So, the affected side will be normal, the angle of deviation, there will be deviation of the angle on the healthy side. The healthy side pull the facial muscles towards itself. So these are the four things which we will be examining on the patient. And then we will be asking few questions from the patient and we will be performing the four next things. So what you are going to do, you are supposed to look upward but keep your head stable and just look upward like that. Okay, fine. So that way we are seeing whether there is frowning on both sides or not. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Maximally. I will try to open your eyes. You are supposed to close your eyes with maximum force. Don't let me open these eyes, right? Fine. So sometimes when there is minor weakness, it's not if it's not that significant, a patient may close his eyes. But when I will be trying to open the eyes, the eye, which whichever one, which one is uh, weaker, that eye patient will not be able to close anymore. So this uh, minute weakness can only be picked if you check eye that way, right? Then the third thing is, I will be asking the patient to show his teeth to me. So if there is some minor weakness and there is no uh, mouth deviation, no, no angle of mouth deviation, you might not be able to see it, but when patient will be showing his teeth, the deviation will be clear, right? So show your teeth, fine, right? So you can see both nasal labial folds are fine and there is no deviation towards any side. Then I will be asking the patient to fill his mouth with air like that, right? So I will just be striking here and I will be striking here. If there is weakness of any part, if the muscles on that side is weak, what will happen? Many a time as will as the patient will be blowing air and patient will be uh, like uh, filling his mouth with that air, the air will be leaked from the weak side. Or uh, if the weakness is minor as I will be striking the cheeks, then the air will be leaked. What next? The two te tests are basically done to see the branches of the facial nerve. And these branches include two things. One is nerve to corda tympani. And one is nerve to stapedius. So in order to see whether the nerve to stapedius is working normally or not, what I'll be asking the patient? I'll be asking, do you hear a lot of noises in one of your ear? Like do you feel that there are uh, significant noises? If somebody is speaking at a normal tone, do you feel that the voice is very loud in your ears, in any of your ears? Or you think that your ears are normal, there is no uh, such problem or abnormality. Hyperacusis. A person hear some normal sounds uh, in a way as if there is a very increased pitch of a certain sound in his ear. It is kind of noise, it converts to kind of noise which disturbs, which can disturb a patient. This is what you call hyperacusis, right? And then there is nerve to. Corda tympani. The corda tympani nerve 
will be checked by assessment of the sensations of the tongue. The anterior two third of tongue is supplied by nerve to cauda tympani, which is a branch of obviously facial nerve. So how you will be assessing whether patient can appreciate taste well or not? You will be placing sugar on the dorsum of the tongue and you will ask the patient, he should close his eyes and you will be asking the patient, can you appreciate what you are tasting at the moment and patient will tell us that this is likely some sweetener. And then you can place salt over that uh, tongue, dorsum of tongue and patient will be appreciating that this is saltish taste. So this is how you examine the nerve to cauda tympani. The anterior two-thirds sensations are carried by this cauda tympani branch of facial nerve and the posterior one-third sensations are carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve uh, which there is no need to assess uh, this particular part of that glossopharyngeal nerve. Uh, it's enough if we perform the other two, three remaining tests which we'll be examining after this nerve. So the next nerve is then a uh, vestibular cochlear nerve will be examining the cochlear portion and uh, lately after we'll be over with the examination of all the cranial nerves at the end of the examination I'll be uh, also, I'll also be checking this help pike maneuver which with the aid of which we basically examine the vestibular portion of this eighth nerve so how to examine the cochlea vestibular cochlea portion, how to examine this cochlea portion? Uh, there are two tests. One test is known as uh, watch test and the other test is known as whisper test. So as far as whispering is concerned and alternate to this thing is you will just be rubbing your thumb against your index finger and you will be bringing it close to the ears and you will be asking the patient whether you are able to hear this thing or not. So can you perceive it? Right. And can you perceive this rub? So that way you are assessing the cochlear portion and watch test can only be performed if you have got that tick tick kind of watch. So you are not supposed to place a regular watch uh, close to digital watch close to the ear of the patient and you will ask the patient whether you can perceive the seconds are going and seconds are running or not. So that is, uh, these are the two things which you examine over the patient. That thing is enough for cochlear portion examination. The next two nerves are then uh, glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve, they are checked together. There will be three things which we will be focusing on. The first thing as I will be asking question from the patient and uh, his reply comes as, well, what's your name? Yahya. Yeah. So if Yahya speaks that way, I ask the patient, what's your name? And he speak as Yahya. Yeah. So this indicates hoarseness of voice. The recurrent laryngeal nerve portion of this vagus nerve suggests the lien of that nerve will always come up like that. A patient will be having hoarseness of voice. What two next things we'll be assessing? We'll be examining uh, whether the palatal movement of patient is normal or not. Soft palate movement. So to examine that soft palate, what we are going to do, we'll be in need of a uh, spatula will be tongue will be in need of tongue depressor basically and with that tongue depressor we'll be depressing the tongue we'll be throwing light inside uh, and we'll be examining for soft palate right pause and uh, with the we'll just be depressing the tongue and we'll be throwing light and we'll be asking the patient to speak ah. as the patient will speak ah, the soft palate in a normal person should move normally upward if there is a lesion of a certain nerve, then this soft palate will deviate toward that particular side, the healthy side. In, in uh, nerve number 7 and in nerve number 12, the healthy side pulls the thing. While in nerve number uh, 5 and nerve number, in nerve number 5 and nerve number 12, the healthy side pushes and in nerve number 7 and in nerve number 12, the healthy side pulls the thing. So when we will be examining that uh, palate, if the soft palate is deviated towards the right side, what does it indicate? It indicates that right side is normal. The other side is the affected side. So always keep this thing in your mind. In nerve number seven, 
एंड इन नर्व नंबर टेन द हेल्थी साइड पुल्स टूवर्ड्स इट सेल्फ एंड इन नर्व नंबर फाइव एंड नर्व नंबर ट्वेल्व ऑपोजिट थिंग राइट सो ओपन यूर माउथ सो आई एम प्लेसिंग इट से आके सो इट सॉफ्ट पैलेट इज मूविंग नॉर्मली ऑन बोथ साइड दिस इज वॉट वी एग्जामिन एंड द सेम वे द सेकेंड थिंग इज Again, by placing that tongue depressor over his tongue, and I'll be preferably I'll be taking another tongue depressor here, and I'll be touching his posterior pharyngeal wall. I'll be touching his posterior pharyngeal wall on two sides of midline. Pause. <laughs> need a stick. Basically, you need a kind of a stick. Yes. Uh, that stick is having some kind of uh, cotton over its top. and you just touch with that uh, thing uh, you touch the posterior pharyngeal wall of the patient as you will be touching in a normal person normal person will gag right so if there is some abnormality of the nerve of certain nerve uh, you will not be able to appreciate gag on that particular side right so what we are going to do here we just assume that these uh, two things are these uh, tongue depressors i'm placing it in the mouth you i need uh, light so i'll be throwing light and uh, with one i'm depressing the tongue and with the other one is i'm touching the posterior pharyngeal wall on one side first and then on the other side so that is how i have touched the wall on both sides midline first on that side then on the other side and you will be appreciating whether there is some gag or not so this is all about the examination of ninth and 10th now the remaining portion i have already told you will be examining at the end the next nerve is then accessory nerve very easy to perform you simply need to ask the patient to shrug his shoulders for you so you will shrug your shoulders like that and then what i'll be doing so pressing there is a rule just put the muscle into action and then check against resistance and then that way you know the normal power of the muscle so first let the patient perform let him shrug his shoulders this will give you an impression that his power is at least 3 by 5 power can be checked by simply by asking the patient to perform a certain thing and then you check the power against the resistance right so shrug your shoulders like that i'll be pushing them down don't let me do that fine thank you and what you are going to do next you are going to examine the sternocleidomastoid you can check this sternocleidomastoid both the sternocleidomastoid at the same time how you can check this sternocleidomastoid if you will be asking the patient to touch his uh, sternum with his uh, chin uh, you will be examining this sternocleidomastoid or you can uh, examine that way you will be examining both sternocleidomastoid at the same time and if you ask the patient to move sideways that way you will be checking one of these sternocleidomastoid right so we'll be examining uh, the sternocleidomastoid one by one so just uh, tilt your uh, face towards one side now i am trying to push it on the other side don't let me do that and i am examining here this thing is stiff now now you move your face in this direction now i'll be pushing your face in opposite direction and you can see this sternocleidomastoid the stiff nerve in that sternocleidomastoid so that is how you examining both sternocleidomastoid and the last thing you have to examine the hypoglossal nerve there are four tests of hypoglossal nerve the two things will be examined as the tongue is inside the floor of mouth right these two things are i'll be looking for fasciculations and i'll be looking for wasting right so uh, i need light for that and then the next two things i'll be asking the patient to protrude out his tongue for me right open your mouth so i have examined there are there is no fasting on either side of the tongue nor there are any fasciculations both these things suggest lower motor neuron lesion of that hypoglossal nerve and then i will be asking the patient to protrude protrude out his tongue so you have to protrude out his tongue what i am going to examine if patient is protruding out his tongue if there is a lesion of hypoglossal nerve what will happen the healthy side will be pushing the tongue towards the 
affected side. Here healthy side will not be pulling. Rather the healthy side will be pushing the tongue towards. So if the tongue is pushed towards right side, it means the lesion is on the right side as well. And the other thing, the second thing which you observe in the setting of upper motor neuron lesion of tongue, the tongue becomes spastic. And as patient will be trying to protrude out his tongue, he won't be able to protrude it out. This is what you call spastic tongue. So these are the two things which you examining by asking the patient to protrude out his tongue. Thank you very much. I am going to uh, tell you how to examine the vestibular portion of this eighth nerve. To examine that vestibular portion, we call it halopic maneuver. Uh, first, the patient will be sitting on that couch. What I will be doing, I will be tilting the head of the patient at 45 degree and then I will be cert, uh, certainly dropping the patient. The patient will be dropped that way that his neck should uh, be in extended position and that extension should be around 30 degree extension. And then I will be watching his eyes for nystagmus and if that nystagmus lasts for more than 5 seconds, that is considered a positive test, right? So what I am going to do now, what I will be doing, I will first be tilting the head of the patient like that and then I will be suddenly dropping the patient like that and I will be seeing the eyes of the patient for 5 to 20 seconds. If that nystagmus lasts for more than 5 to 10 seconds, this is considered a positive test for this vestibular nerve. Thank you.